What is the most bonkers thing that happened to you or your work and your employer still expected you to continue your work day? Right after Hurricane Sandy, the bank I worked for had no power for days, so obviously we couldn't do any banking, rather than just close. My manager insisted that the entire staff show up for shifts as usual, just so we could sit in our normal seats in our uniforms and winter jackets to tell any customers who wandered in that we didn't have power and couldn't help them with anything at all. Just about every single person asked us some variation of then what the heck are you doing here it sucked. On the bright side you got paid for doing nothing. Hurricane Katrina was going to make landfall that day, and the owner of the restaurant I was managing at the time got super pee when I said I wasn't coming in. He wouldn't accept that, and kept bargaining with me. Okay, you can go in for 4 hours, and I can get, other manager, to come relieve you. Number. He was like, well go hide your keys then so we can have someone else pick them up. Absolutely. After the storm hit and devastated New Orleans, the owner was calling me because they needed people to open the restaurant. The roof had blown off of my house, and I was asking him where was I going to live while I worked for him. He said to just get a hotel, as if he was paying me enough to afford such a thing. I also think hotels were pretty well full, not sure. Worked for a small graphic design company fresh out of school. They used cracked software, didn't really pay anyone and were generally shady but I didn't really think anything of it, until the FBI showed up. Apparently they also didn't pay their taxes and so my boss was taken away in handcuffs and the office was closed. Or so I thought. Our boss called our creative director from jail and told us to work from this CD motel room he set up to finish up the assignment or else we wouldn't get paid. Nobody showed apparently as we all decided now would be a good time to look for new opportunities. But, wow that's crazy. Using pirated software is just unacceptable for a business that deals with graphic design. The air conditioning broke down and people started passing out from the heat. But they let us take our ties off. So that was generous. I worked at a restaurant when the AC broke. It was 85 degrees Fahrenheit and for a week or more. My manager told corporate to get someone to come fix it and they did fuck all. Finally a customer complained to corporate that the restaurant was too hot and they fixed it the next day. <laughs> Federal agents with a search warrant shut down all the computers so they could image the drives. We puttered around for hours before we finally got sent home at the regular time. However, long lunches and gym visits were permitted. Someone spilled, or poured out, a bottle of deer attractant on the floor under the shelves in the sporting goods section of Walmart. Stank of deer P4. Well, actually, it probably still does. They never cleaned it, and we had ammo to sell. The power went out at 8am, but we weren't allowed to go home. We sat around doing nothing for nearly 8 hours, just in case the power came on. Then our boss said if it didn't come on by 4pm, we could go home and the work schedule would be pushed ahead a full day. Power came on at 3.50pm, and we had to do our full workload. I was working at a pet store and was used to being bitten by the pets we sold. Hamsters, ferrets, birds, no big deal. This day, however, as I was helping a woman who had brought her dog in, it attacked me. Luckily it was a smallish medium sized dog so it didn't get my face, but I had big bleeding holes all up and down one arm. The lady never said sorry, and my manager told me to go to the back, get cleaned up, and come back out and ring on the resistor. So I did, with big blood splatters all over my yellow uniform shirt. I was working at a hotel on the bar and as a waitress. One day a couple of hours before my shift, I started feeling really sick. I have stomach issues but knew it was different. I called and said I was not feeling great. They insisted I come in. My mum had to drive me in because I felt too sick to drive. I worked an hour, got to the point of I'm definitely throwing up and told them I had to go else I was going to throw up on the customers. They told me that they weren't happy and they better see me tomorrow. I had Norovirus which comes on really quickly and emailed the next day saying this and that I wouldn't be coming in till 48 hours has passed. They were generally nasty people to work for, cliquey, rude, stole tips, demanding and unreasonable. When I told them about a holiday I'd had booked since before they employed me, they asked for my flight number so they could put me on shift 4 hours after it landed. 
Then got pee when I was late cause my plane got delayed. Well, you didn't want to stay at Amy's baking forever anyway. Automotive painting. Been complaining about my mask parts needing replacing for a few weeks. Finally my mask broke and I refused to paint because toxic fumes were coming into my mask. Being the only automotive painter, work came to a halt. I was told to get in there and paint or else. I pointed at the security camera and asked him to say that again but a little louder. He fired two people that day but I wasn't one of them. I told my employer I was moving across country and that my last day was in two weeks. The day came and they called me as I was on the road asking if I was going to come in. I was working in the kitchen at a resort in the Rockies last summer. We had a pretty high grizzly population in the area so when tourists came to stay at the resort we had bear spray that they could borrow if they wanted to walk the trails around the resort. There was a new guy who worked at the front desk who was asked to show a couple of guests how to use the spray in case they needed to. So he slid the lock off and accidentally sprayed a big cloud of mace and basically everyone who was eating working in the restaurant got hit with it because the wind blew it inside. It wasn't so bad in the kitchen but one of the waitresses got it pretty bad and they asked her if she could finish her shift and continued service as if nothing happened. Worked as a cashier at a public swimming pool. Some guy robbed us and took more than 1000 bucks from my register. Note, we were responsible for the money in the register. So while the police sort things out with management and insurance, they expected me to go to the bank, get 1000 euros as changing money and come back to work and end my shift. I quit on spot. That seems highly illegal. When it was hours before Hurricane Harvey was going to make landfaller and they were still tentative about releasing us from work so that we would have time to go and board up our homes, stock up on supplies or evacuate if needed. We were blessed by being allowed to leave one hour early. Sarcasm was meant on that last sentence. Yee that was so much fun. I remember filling sandbags at work and listening to the radio as they said it was up to cat 3 after being at a 1 that morning. I was pretty worried I wouldn't be able to evacuate in time. I'd also just moved to Texas and had no idea where to go, which wasn't helped by my dickhead boss saying San Antonio wasn't going to be any better off. Good times. Working in McDonald's. I was supposed to do the overnight shift but I was sick. I mean couldn't get out of bed and throwing up sick. Called that day, hours in advanced, to say I couldn't make it in. I had been working there quite a few years so they knew I was competent and would never call in unless necessary. I got written up because they needed me and because the freaking hygiene inspector was coming in in the morning. I couldn't believe it. I quit not long after. I recently got chewed out for calling in sick with the flu. I work in a warehouse and bulk loading bag pouring sugar directly into semi trailers. Everything has to be GMP so any sort of bodily fluid anywhere needs to be cleaned properly and any sugar gets tossed. I was vomiting and they still expected me to drive 45 minutes to stand on top of semi trailers for 12 hours and watch sugar flow. I work in a restaurant. One day our oven broke so we couldn't cook any food. The manager made us stay open as we could still sell salad, without the cooked elements, drinks and cheesecake. Total sales for the day were £4.59. That was the cheesecake the manager bought for himself. Bruh, dang. At a factory, sliced my finger open using a cutting blade that had been partially broken, resulting in the spare blade hidden inside it coming partially out of an opening. I grabbed the blade and started using the proper portion of it, but I had unknowingly placed my right index finger right over the exposed spare. I started slicing with the blade and cut a line down my finger from about the middle to the tip. Immediately started dripping blood all over. Called my boss over radio, they ushered me into the nurse's office. They didn't want me to go to a hospital or any form of urgent care because that would have been an incident and reset the days since last incident tracker that people got bonuses for. I was young and let them pressure me into accepting that. So they wrapped it up tight until my finger looked like it had a cast on it and sent me back to work. It wasn't that deep, although it looked nasty. It probably could have used stitches. It healed okay, but I still have a noticeable scar. I work in Osher and this is why crap like bonuses for safe work gets me heated. It definitely shouldn't be allowed because it stops workers from getting proper protections and reporting injuries that could cause major problems. Sorry that happened to you. 
After leaving school I had an evening job at the cinema and I was punched by a patron. Was still then expected to carry on for another 4 hours despite my bleeding everywhere. Let's just say I didn't come in for another shift after that. Ro. And I thought I had bad customers. It sounds like that guy deserved to get dragged out the front door in handcuffs. Worked as a busboy for a now closed restaurant. I came in for my shift one time when they had roofers working on the roof. The section of roof they worked on was all terracotta roof tile and they needed to remove it all to replace it. The upper management decided it was a great idea to have this work done during the lunch hours and were open for those hours. Little did they all know as there were cracks on the ceiling inside and while the removal was happening the terracotta tile dust was raining inside all over the guests and their food. Management still tried to continue restaurant service as usual but the guests were having none of it and just walked out. I come to an empty restaurant littered with tile dust and we were expected to clean it up before dinner started. It took at least a month for my lungs to clean out that crap because I was not provided any respiratory gear to clean up that mess. I had been in an accident where I was hit by a van when on my bike. I was on my way to the hospital and shot a quick text to my immediate boss to let him know that I might not be in the next day, as I didn't know what the damage was and how long I may be. He told me to take the day off to be sure I recovered properly. The next day, his boss called me and asked me where the heck I was. I told him I'd been hit by a van and he said, and, I didn't work there much longer after that. Shoald yelled and I got hit by a freaking van. Snowstorm dumped like 6 inches of snow the day before and then rain creating a sheet of ice on the roads. People were literally abandoning their vehicles on the sides of the highway because the driving conditions got so treacherous it was safer to walk. I had just recently gotten an all-wheel drive SUV and was expected to come in that next day, while my co-worker who had a two-wheel drive sedan was allowed to stay at home until the ice melted. I tried explaining that or does not automatically mean safe to operate on icy roads. I didn't even have chains yet at the time, but that went over like a lead balloon. There's a saying in the Canadian army that four-wheel drive just means you can get all four wheels stuck. It's accurate. Just a few weeks ago, a toilet on the floor above our three offices, branch of a law firm, got stopped up, then unclogged and flooded our offices with crap. It affected the two lawyers, not me, legal assistant. Their desks and papers were soaked, carpet soaked, files soaked. HQ brought us some fans to dry the carpet. The office smelled like a huge BM. We still had clients coming in. No one was ever sent out to clean or remediate anything hazardous. Mold? Crap. Our office is cleaned every two weeks and the cleaners didn't come last Friday, which would have been two weeks since the leak. Time to file an anonymous report. College professor, not a boss. In college, we had our final semester presentations that counted for 60% of our grade. I was on blood thinners at the time and the night before my presentation. I had an accident in the home and split my head open. 12 hours later, it was still bleeding. First thing I did in the morning was email my professor with an explanation and a timestamp photo of blood running down my face. I asked if I could present the following day instead and said that was not possible without a doctor's note. I had to go to the doctor, pay a $32 copay just so the teacher could write on a note Philip's head will not stop bleeding because of medication he is on. I can't believe I had to write you this note. Should have gone to class and tried to do your presentation. Maybe go out of your way to pass the dean or security guard. Working in a retail location for a large cell phone carrier, the expectations were always way out of hand. One experience jumps out in my memory. We were the only store in about a 30 mile radius, so we were slammed. All day, every day, it was spring, the rainy season for us and we got a particularly nasty storm. Roads were flooded all over town. Dumpsters were floating down streets. Tornadoes were spotted 10 miles away. Half of our staff couldn't even physically make it to the store because of the roadways, and they received attendance demerits. I was the manager on duty, calling my area manager to beg to let me close the store while buckets of rain pelted the windows. Lightning crashed, and power flickered. He said it wasn't warranted, he lived about 50 miles away. I'm sure he thought I was exaggerating. My staff were having panic attacks from the storm. P. 
people were in line for hours and pee we were short staffed. Ride it out or risk getting fired. Yeah, I left that job. Sounds like AT&T to me. I worked there in 23 days into my employment I went to the O with a kidney stone. Guess who still got an attendance point. I got a call one day from my cousin saying our house had been broken into. I went home to deal with it and file a police report, and it was honestly so stressful. My supervisor then rang me to ask what time I was planning on coming back to work later in the day because she had paperwork for me to finish. We had temporary offices in an old college dorm that had been declared unfit for students because it had no air conditioning and there was no airflow in the place even with the windows open. Plus my window was directly over the air vent for the college dining hall so I couldn't open it anyway. We were supposed to be out by the summer. Of course that didn't happen. When summer came around the temps in the office were 85-90 degrees with about 100% humidity and dead air. How bad was it? Two of my co-workers had heart attacks and ended up taking early retirement. When I used to work for Verizon, I was asked to work at a new store we had acquired as a sort of interim manager in order to get things set up and new people trained in. The person that was hired to be the permanent store manager was an odd individual. He was usually pretty cool when there were no customers in the store. When there were, however, he would struggle with getting customers phones set up, understandable since he's new, so I would offer help. After the customers left he would call a store meeting. Don't help me unless I ask for it. Okay. Sounds good. Next day the inverse would happen. He'd struggle, get frustrated, eventually begrudgingly ask for my help. Customers leave, and we have another store meeting. If it looks like I'm struggling, come and help. Fine. Repeat a few more times. Eventually one day I come into the store and he starts laying into me about how I act like I own the place and better than everyone else and how I intimidate the other employees, which was hilarious. We got into a shouting match. First and only time I had ever done this with someone that wasn't my younger brother, lol. And it got to the point that my choices were, either I decide to disengage and leave the store, or it's going to escalate into fisticuffs. I left and went to the gas station across the street to call my boss. I explained what happened and that I wasn't going back in there, at least not that day. He gave me a spiel about how disappointed he was but begrudgingly accepted. The guy would be fired a couple weeks later for not being a good fit. Like no crap. Fisticuffs. We had a really bad gas leak at our restaurant once and had to wait outside until the proper authorities could come and fix it. My boss rolls up and yells why are you outside? We need to be making money so if we light up the grills we light up the whole restaurant. He didn't care and insisted that we go back in anyway. We didn't lol. That's when you tell him to go on ahead and you get the frick back. I was 9 months pregnant and having contractions. My GM started working my shifts with me just in case I went into labor, though I had a planned c-section. He was a good boss. My GM had gone to the store for cigarettes when my contractions started and I was pushing through them because I knew they were Braxton Hicks. He comes back and sees this, sends me on maternity leave then and there. Okay, cool. I worked 6 a 10 of that day. It was slow so my GM left. He was working 7 days a week to shadow me, and an hour or so later the afternoon manager, 11A6P, called me and told me if I was scheduled until 2, I needed to return until 2. I said I'm on maternity leave and she said it doesn't say so here, so you need to come in and I said call GM and hung up. I'm 35 weeks pregnant now and waitress, I was sitting down to cut fruit, my area director told me I need a doctor's note to sit down to do it was a welder in a factory. Five minutes after I got back from lunch, a nice bit of slag somehow made it under my glove and burnt my wrist. I quickly dropped the welding gun, trying to get the glove off to get the burning metal off. I tried to grab the gun with my other hand so it wouldn't clatter to the floor and possibly break, but I missed the handle and instead grabbed the hose a little under. The tip of the welding gun swung down, and the hot wire went straight into my leg. I pulled it out and gimped to my lid. Explaining what happened and if I could go treat the wound. The response? You're behind. You'd better hit your number. I didn't get even a bandage. It wasn't recorded. And I still had 6 hours to go. Wasn't the worst pain I've endured. But would not recommend. But now I've got matching scars on my wrist and my leg. 
My first proper job was part time behind the bar in a football stadium, for Americans, soccer, and the catering company running the show was notoriously shite. One shift, there was an older gent at the back of the queue who just collapsed. The stadium marshals came running, started CPR, got a defibrillator out, the whole works. It looked pretty serious and was all happening less than 15 feet from where I was standing. People were still trying to queue up for their pints around the entire scene, staring and just generally getting in the way. Then one of the marshals collared our manager and told him to close the bar, so people would go elsewhere and they could do their first aid without having to shout at people to back off. His response? We can't do that. If we close now that half this section's takings for the day, and besides, I don't have the authority to close this bar, you'll need to talk to the boss. Us bartenders were baffled as our bar slowly filled with our company's upper management and the stadium security people who were all having a blazing row, while there was a guy having a literal heart attack on the floor in front of us, surrounded by the stadium's first haters, all while footy fans were stepping over them trying to get to the bar before the match started. This was also the first time I'd ever seen someone get actual CPR done on them. It's nothing like on TV, which was mildly distressing as a 17 year old from a tiny boring village but hey. Eventually one of the more experienced bartenders just hit the switch for the shutters while the managers argued. Bar closed. Paramedics arrived and took the man off in an ambulance. I don't know what happened to him, but we didn't see three of our managers again after that. We assumed they were let go. Honestly I'd hope they'd been let go after that. That's absurd. I had to organize a set of folders by color but my problem is I'm colorblind so I told him yo I'm colorblind he thought it was me trying to get out of work and threatened to fire me. I had a boss that was colorblind. Sent him a spreadsheet and he sent it back asking if I could color code it. It was. We had a laugh and I changed the colors so he could see it better. I was doing a construction job building houses. As I was walking past to unload a supply truck one of the slanted ceiling tiles came loose slide off the top and hit me in the chest breaking three ribs and cracked sternum. I got a text the next day from my boss saying, heard about the accident, you coming in when I informed him I will not and told him of my injuries he replied oh yeah I was told that, you're still coming in though right I need an extra man to mix concrete and clean up trash, you know just light stuff like I could bend down right now. So I again told him no even if I could of I was still doped up from the pain meds they'd given me at the hospital. The final text was right. About 2 hours later I got a call from his wife apologizing and telling me to rest as long as is required and her husband will just have to get off his fat butt and do his own work for a change. I found out he wanted me to work so he wouldn't have to and although I have a client meetings and I'm meeting with a supplier today excuses were him just not wanting to come and so he could stay home and play video games. When I was living out of state, I got word that my dad, back home, was dying. So I told the district manager of the restaurant I served at that I needed to take a leave of absence for a few weeks to a month and go home immediately. This was in mid-June. Her immediate response was I don't know if I can do that. We're already short staffed for Father's Day. For Father's Day. Not my boss, but my bio teacher. I was a high school freshman in NYC in 2005, 14F at the time. That December, the MTA went on strike for 3 days, shutting down public transportation. I took a city bus to school, on a half hour bus ride across the borough that went over long parkways and lasted for over 5 miles. My parents didn't have a car, we couldn't afford cabs, and that meant the only way I could get to school was if I walked. But since I was still just a 14 year old girl, my parents weren't going to let me walk across the Bronx over dimly life parkways by myself for 5 miles before the dang sun came up just to get to school. They kept me home for the 3 days of the strike. The strike ends, and I get back to school. My bio teacher proceeds to chastise me in front of my whole class for missing 3 days of school. Yeah, sorry, I'm not getting kidnapped or hit by a car or murdered just so you can do a bad job teaching us about cell structures. I was working at a fast food place and the pipeline going to the sewer broke, making water and sewage back up through the floor drains. I called the store manager to tell him we needed to close. He said just keep the water from going into the dining area. I told him it was already out there having come up through the drains in the bathrooms. 
He let us close the doors, but made us keep the drive through open. So we're standing in sewage making food for people driving through. That has to be a health code violation. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.